Good afternoon. Um, as promised, although I'm a little bit late, um, I'm going to train um, one of my dogs to um, detect, locate and indicate a scent that they've never been trained to search for before. The options that were thrown out were um, basil, tobacco, um, perfume, socks, um, things like that. But, but I, I've, the basil that I've got is frozen, so I don't really want to use frozen basil. Um, tobacco I don't smoke and I don't really want to go out and buy half an ounce of Cutter's Choice um, just for a short demonstration but what I am going to use is I'm going to use a star anise here and I'm going to use oregano as well so what I'm going to do, what I intend to do to start this off is to show you the time and the reason I'm going to, or the way that I'm going to show you that this is live in the terms of the start time and the end result is I'm going to use the BBC 24 website um, which should display you the um, current time um, so that I can show you that I'm not diddling it. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what time it is um, and the fact that it is Saturday and then I'm going to show you the current or the, the state of play in terms of um, my lab's um, response to either of these scents without being trained which should be minimal, she may go over and sniff it but there shouldn't be any great um, big um, response to them. So I'm going to start off as I say by filming to prove what time it is and what date it is and then I'm going to cut over, do a little clip of her sniffing the scents for the first time um, then I'm going to fast forward through because it will bore the hell out of you to watch an hour's worth of training so I'll video it but I'll fast forward it um, to the end result where I shall again video the time as being hopefully 2 o'clock um, and show you um, the, the identification of a secreted scent, one of these two secreted scents in a contaminated area which is going to be my back garden which is just full of stuff but I'll throw some other things out there as well. If I can um, I'm going to train her on both, both of these scents individually in the hour um, and I'm going to put both scents out for one of the searches at the end and I'm going to make it search specific so that she's to ignore one of the scents that she's just been trained to find and search for only the other whichever one it happens to be. Okay, so first of all, website, just to show um, the time, it's a BBC News, which hopefully they're just about to tell you what time it is, because it's coming up to the hour. Um, and you should be able to see up in the top corner there anyway, the um, time, it's been one o'clock. nice and interesting for you, a bit of BBC news, but just basically to show you that this is the time now, it's one o'clock on the Saturday. Let's just say you should fire it out in a second, come on mate. Well hello, very good afternoon. In the last there you half go, one o'clock. has been announced that the former Israeli okay, Prime Minister... Okay, then what I've got is I've got a couple of star anise in one pot, and I've got a bit of oregano in another pot, um, and I'm going to put them down on the floor just to show that Bonnie hasn't got any prior association, you know, learning association in terms of searching for these two article so if I put the star anise there and if I put the oregano there um, she shouldn't really pay a great deal of attention to it and there's certainly nothing that suggests that she's indicating anything. Another thing that, that you will notice or that I hope you'll notice throughout the recording of this video is that Bonnie's wearing a remote training collar. I don't have the, the um, transmitter unit with me it's got nothing to do with the actual use of it but the wearing of it is a deliberate act by myself um, because I'm intent um, on dispelling certain myths associated with the use of remote training collars which in professional um, hands and in the right situations can do wonders for enhancing the welfare um, and the long-term prospects for many dogs with um, welfare compromising behaviour problems. So one of the biggest critics or criticisms of the use of remote training collars is that A they damage the bond between the dog and the handler and B, that the dog folds in on itself and the dog is unable to work of its own initiative and unwilling to learn. So that an, an operant dog, a dog that works through um, uh, clicker training, you know, through free shaping and clicker training, um, theoretically, if a dog has received corrections from an e-collar, if the um, critics are right, then that dog shouldn't be able to um, work or should be unwilling to work for reward um, on something like scent detection. And they certainly shouldn't look happy whilst they're doing it. So the, the wearing of the collar there is a completely deliberate act um, and it's just, as I say, it's just something that I want to encourage which is to enlighten people and to encourage people to educate themselves and to read more into and to experience more and to learn as much as they possibly can uh, surrounding the various training tools that are available 
um, particularly in, in the modification of behaviour. Not so much in the training, which is a blank canvas, but the modification where we've got a, a bit of a mess that we need to sort out. So as you can see anyway, the oregano is there, the um, star anise is there. If I open my hands, which would be a search indicator for Bonnie, there's nothing there apart from the most beautiful eyes in the world. Give me a little look. Oh, that was lovely. Okay, so she hasn't had any prior learning on these two. <laughs> Our bond is smashed, isn't it, sweetheart? She hasn't had any prior learning on these two cents. So it's now, what, 12 minutes past... <laughs> 12 minutes past one. So we're going to crack on and we're going to teach her how to um, locate and indicate these two cents. The first one that I'm going to start with is the star anise. And it's all going to be done with clicker training. So from this point on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I think she might just... Oh, I thought she'd eaten it. Um, good girl. What we're going to do from this point on is the video will be speeded up because um, I don't want to bore you with an hour's worth of training. Thank you. Good girl. Stay. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, this time the um, the battery, uh, the star release is in a little plastic bag, so it gives us something to actually carry. 
just to um, show the time scale if I brought my phone out. No, I didn't. Sorry, but it's about, I'm um, probably about quarter to one. I've probably done about 20 minutes worth of training. Um, and so this is the back garden where I'm going to put out three hides. Um, the first one that I'm going to put out at the moment, I don't know if you can see Bonnie's in there in the kitchen. So she's not actually outside. Um, and the first one that I'm going to put out is going to be down in behind the deck in there so she should need to pull the decking board forward in order to access that um, and in terms of contamination I've obviously I've just been walking all the way around the garden a moment ago anyway but just to add to that a little bit I can start throwing some bits and bobs around the garden here that's grape juice because we're on dry thon <laughs> okay so there's the bits and bobs that are thrown about, and now we'll go and get Bonnie. Come here, Bonnie. Wait. Yes, good girl. Okay, so the second search, same article, but this time we're going down inside the Christmas tree. Because there's going to be obviously a lot of pine scent on that tree to compete with the um, small amount coming off the star anise. So we'll go and get her out again. Wait. Yes, good girl. Good girl, that was a hell of a lot quicker than I was expecting. Okay, so the last one then, we'll go for, um, oh, let me think. Uh, we'll go for beneath, the, um, let me think. Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll stick it right up inside this strawberry plant here. So if I push it right down in there, like that. Okay, so that's really nicely pushed down. I don't know if you can see. It's down inside there. Like that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to spoon some mud on top of that one there. So that one's now buried away. Get a little bit more on top of there. Yes, that's buried away. But what I have got is the hole on the other side there, which I'm going to tuck back up inside. There we go, because I don't want anything visible. So hopefully, as we can see there, there's nothing visible at all. And so we're in the strawberry plant now. Because there's obviously disturbance on the mud there, I'm going to create a bit more in this mud here and just scattering this about like this smack into a few of these plants here so the disturbance is pretty widespread and we'll also over here just turn over a little have a mess around as well scrape the whole thing around smack the tree and over here just 
disturbance over here as well in these. And there's a spade. Okay. So last search then. Inside the strawberry pot. Wait. Where is it? Good girl, yes? Good girl. Well done, sweetheart. There you go. What a clever girl. What a clever girl. Speed. 1355. There we go as well. Just brought it up as well. There you go. 1355. So 55 minutes since we started, and we've gone from an unknown scent to three concealed hides in a contaminated area. Well done, sweetness.